This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Why there's a color, soccer is a game. We're all together, and when it is a rain, so cheer us. Oh my, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Head cheerleader here, Joanne Sutton, in the studio with me today. We welcome CEO of the Alzheimer's Society of BC, Maria Howard, has joined us, along with our special guest, Alec Burden, who has shared his story on living with MCI, which is a form of dementia. And our next guest is Bob Leonard Ducey. Now, Bob has been a key member in Canadian soccer for nearly four decades. Thus, the cheerleading song off the top. Uh, Both a former player and now club president of the Vancouver Whitecaps FC, Leonard Ducey's known, uh, renowned for his success on the pitch and his contributions to the community. Bob joins us on the phone today because he's a busy guy. Aren't you, Bob? Yes, I am. (laughs) Yes, you are. Well, it's great to have you join us on the show, regardless in person or on the phone, especially uh, a legend like yourself who's built a connection with the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia. So we know that you are no stranger to Alzheimer's and dementia either. We had your daughter, Sunny, on the show a couple of times last year, and she shared the family's connection to the disease. And maybe you could refresh our memories, please. Sure. Um... Oh, probably about uh, oh, 15 years ago, um, my wife's dad, uh, Denny Veach, who was uh, uh, the general manager when I actually first signed with the Whitecaps uh, 42 years ago. So um, I had a, a business connection with uh, Denny at that time and then um, ended up marrying his daughter, which... Um, one of the things that he had suggested way back then was that uh, the players should not, and my, my wife and her sister were actually um, uh, hostesses with the team at that time, and we were told in no uncertain terms to stay away from the hostesses. But uh, Off limits. Not only, not only did we not stay away, I married one, and uh, one of my teammates married the other daughter. So we, I, I used to uh, constantly rib my uh, father-in-law about that, but... Unfortunately for him, um, he started to suffer um, the symptoms of dementia, and um, so we went through that um, that journey with him, and it probably uh, lasted um, around seven, eight years um, of that, and we went through all the different stages. And um, when I used to hear about dementia, Alzheimer's, um, it was something that I obviously realized was uh, impactful on families, but when you actually go through it yourself and uh, going through it with Denny, uh, you realize how impactful it is and, and how frustrating it is for the individual that's going through it, but probably um, more of, a, of an impact on the family around because you just, you just really, there's no way that you can um, help the individual. And, not long after uh, Denny passed away, um, I started to notice similar symptoms in uh, my mom. And I actually said to my brothers um, at that time, I said, Did, have you noticed that uh, mom is, is actually um, becoming repetitive? And they said, no, 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 it's just, uh, it's just she's getting older and a little forgetful. And sure enough, uh, the symptoms uh, started with, um, with her as well and, and clearly then she was diagnosed with dementia, and uh, we went uh, through about a four-year um, uh, journey with her on that. And uh, interesting, though, that they were both that they were very different in, in their um, their uh, the way that they acted and behaved. And uh, Denny was always a, a gentleman, even when he was in the, uh, uh, the latter stages of the Alzheimer's. He he was always very gracious and uh, polite. And my mom, who most of her, all of her life was a, a very um, caring and um, and personable woman, she turned into to, to someone that we hadn't really ever seen that side of before. And she just was, it was hard to, to be around her, which is difficult for me to say, given that I'm her son. But uh, I think it's just an example of how, how it can impact people in different ways. Yes, and I think Maria's made that point many times, Maria, about it It affects everybody differently, doesn't it? It does because everybody comes with their own personal relationship and experience, and um, we all see things through a, through a different a different way. 
Um, and so I, I think Bob makes a great point in that, um, you know, a person with Alzheimer's uh, and their experience can, is vastly different from the next person beside them. Mm -hmm. So there's no one one single path that anybody can follow. Uh, Bob, you raised a lot of really good points as well, but um, maybe you could refresh our memory of um, through uh, the journey with your father-in-law and, and both with your mom. How did you ever make contact with the Alzheimer's Society? Well, interestingly enough, it, I, I don't think it was until um, after my, my mom passed away that um, there was an article in the Vancouver Sun. It was a, a full-page spread on my mom and and uh, on um, the dementia and Alzheimer's that we, my wife and I, had uh, gone through with her dad and then my mom. And I think it was probably after that that it became a little more common knowledge that um, that I had gone through this uh, and um, was contacted by the uh, Alzheimer's Society and uh, ha have done some things along the way. I spoke at, at their, their breakfast uh, a couple of years ago and... Um, I've tried to do as much as I can to part in the, uh, the Scotiabank half marathon and 5k fundraiser. So there, there's different things that I've done along the way and, and I'm always happy to, uh, to participate um, because I have a full knowledge of, of what it is uh, that people go through. And, and so if I can give back in any way, then I'm happy to do that. And we're happy that you do that as well. So you mentioned the Scotia Bank Half Marathon and 5K fundraiser, and and your daughter Sunny was, or yeah, Sunny was doing some fundraising for that as well. Uh, and now we talk about a family that really gets involved. Uh, you're here today to also share uh, your story about your role with the Mount Kilimanjaro Grouse Grind Climb for Alzheimer's. So uh, tell us about this event and and why it's important to you. Well, uh, unless uh, Maria has changed the plans, uh, I believe that I'm going to be the MC uh, on September the 25th um, um, for, at the, the base of Gross Mountain to, yes. to kick off the, the climb. Uh, yeah, abs right, Maria? Yeah, absolutely. So no change. Yeah, yeah, You're it. You are the host. I will pick you up if I need you. <laughs> All right. No, I can actually walk over from my house. It's too far. Well, that's super. Well, we're, we're glad. So, so uh, why, why this event? Well, and it's been going on for, for a number of years, and I, and I was at, uh, at one of the events uh, as a guest, uh, I think about two, three, or three, four years ago. And uh, it, it's just a great event because it uh, raises awareness of, uh, of Alzheimer's. And I think the more that we can do to, um, to shed a light on it uh, and to perhaps educate people that, and I'm a great example of it, as is my wife. Um, we knew about Alzheimer's, and but it, it, it happened to other families. And then all of a sudden it happened in our family, and not once but twice. And I, I, I do believe that if, if there had been um, more of an effort on my, my part, and if I had been more exposed to... Uh, to the disease, then yeah, I might have taken more time to understand it a little bit better. Um, so I, I think, again, just creating that, that awareness that might perhaps jolt people into finding out more about the disease and perhaps deciding that uh, they want to they want to help fund the the, uh, the, the fundraising as well. Um, all of those things are good in terms of, uh, of Alzheimer's itself. So this uh, event has been going on for a couple of years, the MKGG. Is there anything new about this year's event? Well, that's, uh, I, I, having not uh, been there for a few years, I'm not entirely certain. I know that my role is to, uh, is to, to run the proceedings, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that Maria would have more of, a, of, a, um, of, of information in terms of, of that side of it goes. She's going to fill that blank in right now. Well, there Thank is actually a, a change this year. I think one of the things that we talk about, we've talked about throughout the show today, is that um, everybody's journey with Alzheimer's is unique to them. And so we have um, changed up the grouse grind in, uh, event a little bit. So there still will be the grouse grind and we'll be encouraging people to register in, in teams and and uh, climb climb the grind. But we're also going to have on top of the uh, mountain what we call the summit stroll. 
And that is recognizing people who may not be able to uh, do the grind um, for a number of reasons, but they still are, want to participate in the event and uh, raise awareness and raise raise funds, which we greatly appreciate. And so people will be, will be able to take the gondola to the top of the mountain and then enjoy the summit stroll. And and again, that is recognizing that everybody goes through the, the Alzheimer experience in a unique, unique way. And we need to support everybody because everybody comes um, with their own challenges and, and not. And, you know, I just like to add, and I, I appreciate your comments, Bob, about um, you know uh, speaking up and 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 sharing uh, your experience because I think uh, you hit it right on the nail. When there are lots of people who know, most people know about Alzheimer's, um, but most people don't know that there are um, a lot of things about Alzheimer's that through education and support can um, be done maybe in a different way. And I think Alex shared today a, a, a already a useful tip about how you find your car keys. And, and that's what the society wants to do, ensure that people who are going through this have the support they need um, all along the way so that when they have to figure out what to do next, uh, they're not just wondering, but they have, first of all, the confidence to start a conversation, to, to ask for help, and then they actually receive the support that they really need. It, it's a tough journey. Mm -hmm. And I think when we were speaking with Alec as well, uh, earlier in today's show, that when you received your diagnosis, he, you know, you're an educated guy, you're well-rounded, you probably thought you knew what it was, but you said you didn't have a clue. I had no idea at all. Yeah. See, you don't understand the big picture, and I'm really glad, uh, Bob, that you, you, you've, you've helped us with that as well. So back to the uh, Mount Kilimanjaro Grouse Grind event, September 25th. Uh, if you want to register uh, or find out more information about it, uh, go online, hikemkgg.com. You can register today. Uh, Bob, I, I don't, you're not actually climbing, are you? I had a hip replacement a few years back, so it's not advisable that I do that. And I actually have to have my other hip replaced soon. So um, you're I'm out. <laughs> yeah, we you're... can take the gondola together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any other soccer players from past or present? You should be able to get some of the team involved or some of the, well, the administrative yeah. staff. I think I think <laughs> we're we have a home game the day before that one, so we'll we'll uh, we'll put the word out, but. Um, as of right now, it's uh, yours truly, and uh, we'll see what we can do in terms of rallying other support. We will see you at the base of the Grouse Grind on the 25th for the MKGG. That's correct. Yes. 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bob Leonarduzzi, host of the Alzheimer's Society of BC's Mount Kilimanjaro Grouse Grind event. Uh, there's still time to get in. The event runs on the 25th, but uh, thank you for sharing your story with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more information about this and any of the support services or programs with the Alzheimer's Society, please call them or you can visit them online. Their website, alzheimerbc.org. I just want to say a very special thanks to all of our guests today. CEO of the Alzheimer's Society, Maria Howard, Alec Burden, thank you for joining us live in studio and sharing your personal journey. Anytime. Bev Stanwood uh, on the phone about uh, caregiving for her mother who is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and also uh, Bob Leonarduzzi for um, uh, keeping the conversation going and, and doing his part with the community. And thanks to you as well for joining us on Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm Joanne Sutton. Don't forget about World Alzheimer's Day, September 21. Thanks for listening.